My name is Joe Murray and I'm a gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. My practice focuses on celiac disease. I'd like to talk about the treatment of celiac disease. Now for over 50 years the only treatment for celiac disease has been the gluten-free diet. And whilst that uh, seems simple in theory, it's quite difficult in practice for many patients to achieve a completely gluten-free diet. And as many people with other disorders where avoidance is one of the treatments, having an alternative or even an adjunctive treatment, something that helps people manage their celiac disease, is very desirable uh, for people with celiac disease. And it's certainly one of the most common questions that I'm asked when I diagnose patients with the condition for the first time, is, Doc, when will there be a pill or an alternative to doing this diet? So one of those attempts um, at addressing alternative treatments is a study recently published in Elementary Pharmacology and Therapeutics. This was a multi-center study based in North America, Canada, and the United States, of which we at the Mayo Clinic were part. In this study, over 184 patients participated in a study. These were patients with celiac disease who were on a gluten-free diet who volunteered to be challenged with gluten and at the same time receive a medication or a placebo. And this med medication called lorazotide acetate is an experimental drug that reduces the impact or aims to reduce the impact of gluten on the intestine. In particular, when gluten contacts the intestine of a patient with celiac disease, it causes the lining cells to pull apart. This increases the leakiness of the intestine and allows gluten and possibly other molecules to pass through the wall of the intestine. This passage can increase inflammation. And this happens very early after somebody is with celiac disease is exposed to gluten. This drug, taken immediately before meals, aims to reduce that impact. This study, I think, is important in several ways. One, it shows the interest of patients who are willing to put themselves to what turned out not to be a very high level of discomfort, but to really to, to uh, allow themselves to uh, be given gluten at a dose that would produce some symptoms. This study um, looked first, its primary outcome was to look at leakiness, and really that did not show much of an impact of this medication or any measurable impact of this medication on leakiness of the intestine. It did show, however, that there seemed to be a reduction in the increase of antibodies that are used to monitor celiac activity. It also showed that perhaps there were less gluten-related symptoms that occurred to patients during this challenge who were taking the active medication. This study is really a part of a larger program that will study, that's continuing to study lorazotide acetate as a potential additional treatment for patients with celiac disease. And that's one of probably now two or three approaches that have already reached what we call clinical trials. That is testing in patients. Much of that testing, of course, first focuses on safety. And then others, then the, the focus starts to change and becomes more on efficacy or how well does it work. Now, do I think that this treatment or other treatments are going to be what I call a passport to eating gluten with impunity? Probably not. But they may, if successful, reduce the sensitivity of a patient with celiac disease to gluten. And it may be that it may allow for perhaps some low-level gluten contamination to occur without injury or symptoms. Of course, a lot more work must go into both this and the other agents that are being tested uh, for celiac disease because they really have to know that they're safe and that they're effective. I think one of the things I learned from this trial was how enthusiastic patients with celiac disease are for participating in this type of trial. They really want to advance the science 
in order to increase the opportunities and options for themselves and others who suffer from celiac disease. So this is something we will see, I'm sure, a lot more of in the next year or two.